Do, 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 do. Uh, I, I so enjoy that music every week. I know, right? Theme song alert. Week's end. Oh my God, man, we survived another week. Right? It's amazing. Right? It's amazing. I know. I feel like that's an accomplishment. You, um, you got an earthquake going on over there? It looks like you're shaking it. I'm just like moving stuff around. That's all. All right. All right. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, we're going to have a lickety split show this week, folks. Welcome back to Week's End. This is episode number 53. My name is Ryan Boyles. As always, we have uh, Mr. Graham Noseworthy to, you know, class up the joint. I am, I am very classy. And there's a good reason why we're going to have a short uh, broadcast today to our tens tens of viewers maybe yeah. even single digit viewers and the, the very simple reason is because i've got to get ready for a wedding it's not me oh but my stepson matt is marrying his beautiful fiance myra tomorrow so we have a rehearsal dinner tonight and we have their wedding tomorrow and so to remark uh, mark that occasion i'm going to very briefly just sing one line uh from uh one of my favorite lines from uh one of my favorite songs from my fair lady i'm getting married in the morning ding dong the bells are gonna chime now again it's not me getting married but you get the point yes to the, yes, to the bridge, yes. Right. <laughs> to the bridge. <laughs> best wishes to the bridge and groom oh my god there we go this is what you get for real-time production we don't have any interns but we are interviewing interns we just want to yes we interns. we always are interviewing interns we just don't ever actually do anything with them but anyway yeah here we are man so uh it's it's nice we're doing a show a little earlier in the day we're gonna see if maybe people prefer that maybe maybe you do hey tim arthur yo yo so, uh, we're excited we're gonna we're gonna talk about let's see we're gonna talk about the suicide squad there will probably be some spoilers we're gonna talk about tokyo's olympics we're gonna talk about my new longboard we're gonna talk about some toys we're gonna talk about the last man standing is it one of us i don't know yet is Ryan now the last man standing? Yes, he is. Look at the screen. He's the last man standing. No, that's a lie. I'm still here. So uh, what do you want to do first, man? Let's go. Uh, I think we got to get into Olympics first because I know okay. this has been like you are a big, big, big Olympics fan. And watch I am an, no, no, no. I am an Olympic super fan. I am a super fan of the Olympics. Well, all right. Well, t so what's been going on? Because I've only been watching things. I like. I think you get into much more yep. of, of the full scope. So, so as you know, Ryan, I, I am not a sportsing fellow. I do not watch any football, uh, baseball, cricket, hockey, golf, you name it. I think it's all cool. I just am not into it. So, But for some reason, since I was a little kid, the Olympics were a very big deal in my family, and we always watched them, and I love them, whether it's summer or winter games. And, uh, so yeah, I've been watching, watching it all, a anything I it's on, on my TV. It's usually on second screen, even while I'm working, I don't know if I should admit that, but, uh, I watch it night and day, first thing in the morning, last thing at night. And I've been watching it all, whether it's crazy things like speed climbing and race walking and canoe slalom or <laughs> some of the new stuff, like some of the new karate stuff that they're doing. I watched, a a a, a, a 40 year old woman from Spain yesterday when I don't even know what it was called, but it was like single person karate where they do this. It's like a demonstration of their technique. And it was astounding. Yeah. No, that's um, what I'm into too. So I, that's, yeah. that's honestly, I've only been watching the new stuff really. Um, other than soccer, my, you know, my big thing, yeah. soccer. So I've been rooting yeah. on the women, of course, but um, yep. skateboarding, skateboarding has been, I wasn't sure what to expect from skateboarding. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, but uh, I'm kind of stoked now that it's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I've really been enjoying all of the common sports, like you were saying too. All all the usual stuff, soccer, the the track and field. I mean, any of that. The the scene where the two guys won the high jump and then shared the gold medal, dude, I was crying. And my, my thing is like, yes, I love it when America wins. I'm an American or Canada. I'm also a Canadian. So when either one of those wins, it's it's cool. But I like watching any athlete from any country win their medal because it's right. always a beautiful moment. It's always extraordinary. They always deserve it. It's always the culmination of years of work. It's on a global stage and it's, and it's just really, really cool. So I love the Olympics, but what's interesting is my son taught me something yesterday that I never knew about the Olympics. And I was really floored by this. You're supposed to say, what is it, Graham? 
Uh, what is it, Graham? Well, Ryan, thank you. I'm glad you asked. Um, so I, he told me that in 1948, uh, the Olympics actually had medals for, they had arts competitions. And it included all kinds of things like painting and sculpting and singing and composition. But it also included architecture and things like city planning. And to this day, there is an arts exhibition at every Olympic Games. Now, they don't give out medals anymore. I think they should, but they don't. But I thought that that was... There it is, bridge and groom again. So that's a, that's a really cool thing. <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> Coming soon to Netflix, the new series Bridge and Groom. You can tell what kind of uh, week this has been, folks. Yeah, it's going to be a, 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 a fucking buddy cop series, Bridge and Groom, with Ryan Boyles as the bridge and Graham <laughs> Noseworthy as Mr. Groom. Now, now that's just getting creepy. Now it kind of sounds like we're getting yes. married, which would be cool. I, I'm all right with that. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, so the arts competitions, man. Isn't that cool that they used to it do that? It is really cool. And so you were showing a tweet earlier that um, I really was nerding out about. Um, but let me let me toss this up really quick. Yeah, there it is. So the categories in, in the 48 Olympic Games were categories that were inspired by sports-related themes. So architecture, literature, music, painting, and sculpture. Um, I, I believe that means they all had to be based around that. So... I, I have to do some more reading. The link is there. Uh, we can also share that in the show notes. But uh, it just was it was just really cool. And those are two pieces that I found from the 48 games that I thought were exceptionally expressive and beautiful. Um, and so, yeah, man, really, really cool stuff. And I think it's cool they have the exhibition. I wish they would share that. I wish they would show that. I, I've been an Olympic super fan since I was a kid. I had no idea. So if you did know and you're watching the show, I would love if you'd let me know if you had heard of this before, if you knew about the exhibition. But I think they should bring back the medals. Um, even if it's considered an exhibition with medals, I still think that they should do that. And I think it's really, really cool. The other thing is, um, and I, I think you saw this tweet too, Ryan, was another thing that I started doing this week was every time they introduced an athlete from a country or even a city and state in the United States, like if it was some city I'd never heard of um, or some country and city that I'd never heard of, I Googled it. And then what I did, I Googled the name of that city and state. And then I looked at the images and I sort of found that I was learning, seeing some of these places that these athletes come from in, in yeah, yeah. countries all around the world. And that was a really cool way to sort of second screen experience the Olympics um, in Tokyo. So I also want to recommend that people do that. If you get a chance, Google Gabby Thomas. Gabby is from Florence, Massachusetts, which is part of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, where I grew up. And Florence is an exceptionally beautiful little part of the world. So, but do yourself a favor. And I love the stories. Oh, I love the stories and the, the, uh, shining a spotlight on these on the cities and where folks come from and even just their families it's been yeah. really because most of the families are watching remotely it's been tricky to like you know cover this with the audience uh not being there live in person but it has been interesting to see i think it's brought out more of the family stories because the broadcasters have had to knit together sort of a new type of broadcast and bring them in and and create you know a virtual bond as best they can, but it's really been powerful to see those stories in that format. I would also okay. say going back to s skateboards and, 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 and karate, and then we'll move on is that, you know, one of the biggest stories uh, or, or sort of more interesting stories about karate that I saw is that bringing this sport into, to this sort of stage, the Olympics, really uh, one of the masters, um, that they interviewed in California um, said, you know, he's third generation teaching, you know, the art and it's really about discipline and teaching civility and teach, you know, it's not about kicking and punching. And so I think it's interesting to have a sport where the focus is about discipline. Um, and, and that's, that's, that's really cool in this day and age when we don't have so much civility in social media and then skateboarding. I think there are a little, there's a little trepidation about like, is skateboarding still going to be cool if it comes to the Olympics? But I think they've put that to rest with, with the amazing things that we've seen um, from the international stage. I mean, so many great talents from so Brazil, many great talents. Brazil yeah. South America, all over the place that have just been, and that's not a sport that like, obviously that like us is a shoe in to win, which a lot of the other sports could be, you know? 
Yeah. And, you know, the, the last thing I'll say about the Olympics, and then we got to move on to some other topics, is I don't know if it's just the times and the way in which I'm viewing it, but I am seeing disproportionately more coverage of women competing, and I think that's great. And I am really enjoying that. So um, I think it's it, – I, 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 I have well, no idea if it's still good or say, not, but I think it's great. I don't want to get into the negative side of the Olympics or social media any, but there was a woman – in track and field who broke the men's record for the 200, I believe. Fantastic. Don't quote me on that, but there was a um, really good story there. I think um, good. let's, let's talk about Thanks. suicide squad. Yeah. Um, so to catch everyone up, there's been a little bit of drama in the DCU DCEU, I guess we should call it. Um, but let's just talk about this. Um, James G uh, Gunn, he jumped ship from uh Marvel and is in DC now. Um, he brought some actors with him, though. <laughs> I thought yeah. that was interesting. I don't know if you thought that was interesting, but I did. I, I did. It's like the ensemble came over, right? So, um, but there are some some carryovers as well. Uh, Margot Robbie, who plays everyone's fan favorite Har Harley Quinn, um, the guy that plays Flag, who I don't know his name, and I'm sorry, but there were there were some returning characters to the squad. Um, it was a fun movie. I just want to start there. I, I think this, in a way, sort of, it was it was dark but funny at the same time. And I think it almost gives you kind of a blueprint for, like, saving the DCEU. Yeah, I I, I agree. I thought it was great. You're you're speaking of Joel Kinnaman, by the way, who plays yep. uh, 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 Colonel Flag there, um, who also was magnificent. Also is magnificent in. Um, for all mankind, which is coming back soon. But I really liked it. Um, you know, a friend of mine pointed out that King Shark there, I forget his name, is kind of like their version of doing Groot, which that's fine, but I, I really enjoyed his character. The I funny thing movie is, a lot. this is Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> that is hilarious. I, he's chewing on a, on a head there, by the way. Yep. I, 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 I really liked it. Now, uh, let's just go ahead and do a spoiler warning here uh, for those of you maybe who have not seen it yet. I know we're not even 24 hours into its release, but I thought it was great. I thought, so there's your spoiler alert. Hang up now if you're not interested. Right. Um, I, I thought that uh, Battling Starro was genius. I thought that it was funny how they set up a bunch of characters and just killed them immediately. I thought that that was very bold and, and really cool. The cinematography was beautiful. There were a couple of slow parts, but that's okay. And I thought the scene with Harley uh, where she breaks out and then they rescue her, which isn't really revealing a lot because they show that in the trailer, was the full version of that scene was intense. So yeah, I really I like the film I and that. I hope he does more. I thought Polka Dot Man stole the show. I thought it was, yeah. uh, yeah, I thought yeah, it yeah. was really good. Really I thought good. it was Great interesting movie. how the weasel Polka Dot Man rat catcher two spoiler alert is like the hero of the film. Like, I mean, there was so much to this that um, was unexpected, but I, I was, I was going into this knowing that we were going to get a lot of surprises like that. And I, I, I think, you know, James, they Gunn, delivered. I mean, we, when we did our DC fandom coverage last summer, I mean, yeah, they were, they were literally doing the press tour for this film then. Yeah. And, uh, and we knew we were going to get some, like a, a roller, a, an F bomb R rated hard R rated, you know, roller coaster ride. And that's what we got. Yeah, I mean, I thought James Gunn or Jimmy Gun Guns, as he's known to friends like us, <laughs> I thought he did a really good job, delivered. Um, I am, I still enjoy the other movie, just Suicide Squad. I, I well, liked yeah. it. But this is just, I mean, pff, this is hell and gone from that. Uh, which, and of course, which this, I think this a, proves a amazing. point here, though. Um, I'm betting this is James, James Gunn's movie, meaning he made the movie. He got the permission to make the movie he wanted to make. I really do think they should restore the ire cut and we should see the original version of that too. I just think, I yeah. think they fit. I think they fit together. Here's the thing. I, I this, do too. These are comic book movies, comic book movies, folks. So comic book storylines change all the time. 
because they get new artists and new writers and new whatever. These yeah. two movies can fit together just fine. I, I in, totally in the, agree the whole, that they fit in, together in, in the series. So, I, and even as they are right now, it feels like they fit together. I mean, right. they really they do. did not. They, really they do. didn't. They didn't do an origin story. They just showed as if she was picking a new team. It was still the same. So I know they say it's a reboot, but it 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 felt like well, they I, go together. I really appreciate that. I appreciate that they didn't even explain who Flag was. Yeah. Flag just showed up, and he was the leader of the team. Boom, done. Yes. It wouldn't have worked otherwise. You know what I mean? I agree. Um, so, so that is cool. I think uh, let's talk about toys and well, no, no, no. Let's switch over to why the last man. So there's a trailer out for a new film that is coming. I want to say, isn't it Hulu? Yes. Um, well, it's FX on Hulu exclusively streaming. Uh, yeah. But is, isn't that Hulu? That is Hulu. It just okay. means right. it just means that a lot of FX programming now is getting sucked into the Hulu mothership. Um, um, but it's coming out September thirteenth, which is roughly a month and change from now. This is another comic book film that I think, you know, we're starting to get these more fringe stories or more like out there stuff. So I'm excited about it. I, I'm excited too. I love the scene when they say, "Madam President." Um, the power plants are going to start shutting down. And, and she says, what, which city? And the girl looks and just goes, all of them. <laughs> and I was right. like, wow. Well, that's some gravity. Let me tell you right? something. You turn off the lights and we're in the stone age lickety split. So, yep. Well, and I love, I, well, I, I kind of like thought it was fun that they use James Brown uh, music in this trailer. So I'll give them, I'll give them a hat tip for that too. Yeah. Um, oh, and, that and, reminds me. I loved how they opened up with in in Suicide Squad. I loved how they opened up with um. Yes. Oh my uh, God. Well, Johnny Cash. Well, Johnny Cash. I, that was, Cash was fantastic. I, I love so that the, song. Yeah, we 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 would be we would be remiss not to go back and talk like for thirty seconds about the music in the Suicide Squad is amazing. Like it. Yes. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel cheap, like it does in some films where you can tell. They're just trying to have like almost like the McG, like yeah, the yeah, knockoff yeah, yeah. McG effect, if you if you yeah. want to call it that. Um, this felt like it it felt fun in all the right places, and and yeah, it, it just was awesome. So yep. check it out. Loved it. Um, I wonder if like I I really want them to come back with like soundtracks that you want to buy from a film. I know we I know we're streaming everything these days, but it seems like this would be a soundtrack I would actually want to go check out on Spotify. Why don't you show us Wait a minute. Why don't you show us what you got on the floor? I think you're standing on something right now, right? I I am not standing on it. It's sitting okay. next to me, but so I have started a a a, a pretty great exercise regimen. I'm up at 6 a.m. Uh, most days. I'm either at the gym or I'm hiking. And I wanted to find something that would allow me to mix that up on certain days where maybe I just want to get out there, but not uh, go crazy. So um, when I was a kid, I had a neighbor across the street, this guy, Wade Johnson. And I can't remember if it was me or my brother, but he built a longboard. He literally made his own longboard. And I used to use it all the time. I don't know what happened to it. It's probably just went in the trash at some point but it was really cool and you know i'm also a snowboarder and i used to be a rollerblader and i have an electric kick scooter so those kinds of like things i really love so i invested in a magneto longboard Whoa. which is bamboo with a canadian maple core yes. and uh <laughs> red 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 I, I don't know if that's true it's now, are they core. all that way or did you get the special canadian edition with the special canadian red wheels I, I, I'm, I fully confess to have bought the special edition. Oh my God. And so this is my 44 inch, uh, kicktail cruiser and I'm really, really, really excited about it. So I'm going to take it easy. And, right. and somebody made a good point when I talked about this on Twitter, they made a good point. They're like, get wrist guards. So I did and obviously I have a helmet, but I've got a perfect parking lot near here, flat, brand new, really nice. And I'll just take it easy. And, you know, maybe I can do some carving and just kind of have a little bit of a different exercise. So I've got a, uh, I got a kicktail cruiser. All right, I got something to show off to you. Okay, I want to see it. And then we're wrapping this show. Yeah. Um, oh ah! I was trying to produce a jump. I was trying to produce a jump scare in our show live. Whoa! All right, check this out, folks. This is amazing. You know, I'm like an Aliens fan, right? I, alien. I, the I, film. I, I, the I film. Do. Right. I do. Um, I also am into extraterrestrials, but this 
is Xenom a new Xenomorph toy line that has like it is so articulated. It's amazing. It also comes, of course, with the egg and uh, face hugger for you to cuddle if you're lonely. Um, this is an exclusive series at Walmart, special edition. Look at this one. This one has the dog. So this is from Alien, <laughs> uh, I guess, Resurrection, which I'm like, wow, that's it's a deep got cut. the dog. Um, that's interesting. Um, or what? No, was it the dog from Alien 3? I can't even remember now. I should, I should oh, know. Oh, um um here's one from i guess I aliens funny. aliens the film because it's got a face hugger in a biomedical canister um and then i just think these are super cool so i'm nerding out with these on my desk uh in between you know all my uh, busy awesome. work week I warrior it. i love it warrior runner all that all right and i want to i want to not end on a bummer low note but i do want to just give a shout out um okay so we've talked about this on the show before. Um, mm -hmm. J.W. Rensler passed away this week. And if you'll recall, right. he is the author of just this, you know, if, if you know who he is or if you don't, you need to go buy all of his books. He's sort of like the guy that does the definitive edition, the making of books. And he's done it for the Indiana Jones films, the Planet of the Apes films. He did it for all of the Star Wars films and the Alien films. And the Alien, just the Alien book that for the original movie, oh my, it is a must, must, must have, must read. Um, it's it's hardback. It's it's this just excellent coffee table book and it's incredibly uh, deep. ordering that um but 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 i just wanted to give a hat tip because he's he sort of is he's gone too soon and uh his he had books in the works for all uh for several of uh stanley kubrick's films so i'm hoping wow. they actually finish and publish those because those yeah. have to be amazing so wow. hat tip to jw rensler Cool. Awesome. Love it. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. We yes. are at time. That is our show. This is Graham. I am Ryan. We will see you next Friday for weeks. Absolutely. Yay. Thanks everybody. Talk soon.